Um, and you have been looking at the films you produced this week, so thank you for doing that. Um, what was your analysis then? Do you think childhood still exists for, for children who are 11 and older in 2014 in this country? I thought the films were actually very sad. And what they show is how childhood has been commoditized. So children feel that they've got to be worthy products of some sort, whether it, it, the way they look or whether how many friends they have on Facebook. Otherwise, they're not worthwhile. And really, as adults, we've created this sort of culture where children are almost akin to handbags, and they feel that they've got to enhance themselves constantly in a particular way to be loved and cared for. And it's extraordinary when we look at the 83% of the children we asked, and we asked lots and lots of them, regardless of background or kind of wealth, they feel stressed. How can a child feel stressed? Well, they feel stressed because they're being pushed through a schooling where it's exam driven and they're not allowed to really think. That's one end of the spectrum. At the end where we work in the inner cities, one in five of our children were found by UCL to have been shot at and or stabbed with 50% of our children witnessing shootings and stabbings in the last year. So either end, whether you're a well cared for mm. child and you're being pushed or whether you're a really vulnerable child. And you mentioned that adults have created this environment, which, which we love, but maybe isn't great for children, because technology is probably the biggest difference, isn't it, between your, my, our childhood and the childhood of 11-plus-year-olds now. Um, at what cost do you think that comes to? Do you think we've been That's folly in some way? That's worrying, because what happens in technology is the child has 100% control over the communication. So if they don't like to continue listening to something or whatever, they just switch it off. But human relationships are not like that. They need to be reciprocal. But they're also exposed to the whole world at their fingertips, aren't they? And that can be a danger too, can't it? Yes, and the cyberbullying is very problematic mm. because the bully is removed and can't see the consequences of their bullying so much. But I do think that we have to sit up and pay attention because after a while, children will lose the ability to interact in live contact which is exactly if we don't watch it. Which is exactly what one of our leading experts said. So, so what do we do, Camilla? If you were in charge of the world, what would you be doing to, to change things around to create maybe a better childhood for children? Well, I think day? nationally we need a healthy philosophy around how we care for children. And to achieve that, I believe the government should set up a commission to look at the needs of children in this country and map out a philosophy of care for the most vulnerable, but also some way of protecting children against this sort of exposure that they can't handle. It's just the government, though, is it? It's parents. Ultimately, they're responsible for their children. What, how should we parent in, the, in 2014? But it is government, too, because governments are there, our leaders are there to set up a culture and an attitude and if you've got the education minister conceptualizing childhood as a period where you have to just skill up to succeed, that is not all of childhood. And yet that's the kind of narrative that's put out and that's what pushes parents. Very briefly, would you like to be a child in 2014? No.